Hi everyone, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Cassandra. This will be a yin yoga practice. If you're already a longtime viewer and subscriber of mine, let me start by saying I'm sorry it's taken me so long to upload a new yin yoga class. I only like to really film these and do these yin yoga classes in my own home here <laughs> with my cat Cleo. And unfortunately, I had some camera issues and had to order a bunch of new stuff. So, anyway, it's all sorted out now. I am back in my home, back being able to film some really great classes with you. Grab all of your props. Um, I'm gonna use a big bolster. If you don't own one, don't worry about it. Just two blocks will do the trick. Or you can also just grab a big cushion or something like that. And we are going to start with the bolster in supported fish. So if you don't have a bolster or a big pillow that you can use, you can just use two blocks and you'll be putting one block underneath the upper back and the other block underneath the back of the head. So it would look something like this in between the shoulder blades and then the other one underneath the back of the head. Otherwise, with your bolster, you can just go ahead and lie all the way back so that your mid and upper back are supported, the neck has support, and the head can just rest heavy. You can do whatever feels good for the arms, either letting them drop one side to the other, or you can even extend your arms up overhead. I'm not gonna do this just because I'm working with a bit of an injury in my upper back, so I'm gonna keep my arms next to me. Legs can be out straight in front of you, or you can take a hip opener by bringing the soles of the feet together to touch and letting the knees fall apart. So take the time to get yourself comfortable here. If you are new to yin yoga, we hold these poses for a few minutes on each side. Could be two minutes, could be eight minutes, just depends what we're doing. yourself settled in the pose in a way that's comfortable and easy to hold. We rarely want to use effort in yin yoga. We are mostly trying to get gravity to do the work for us. Relax the jaw and the neck.
you had your legs in the butterfly shape. Try to bring the soles of the feet back down to the floor. And if the arms were up overhead, just slide them back down. We're gonna come to seated. So if you're on a bolster, you can just roll to one side or you can use your hands behind the back of the head. Just slowly lift yourself back up. And so come to take a comfortable seat and we'll do a neck release sequence. So no props required for this. Sit up nice and tall in a way that is comfortable for your low back. So lifting up, draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. And we're gonna drop the right ear towards the right shoulder. Keeping the chin slightly elevated this is enough, hold as you are. Otherwise, left fingertips can reach out towards the side and you can use your right hand to lightly pull the ear a little further away from that shoulder. So just trying to lengthen the space through the left side of your neck. If it's too much, just back off a little. attention to the quality of your breath. And let's start to draw our chin down towards the right shoulder and right armpit. Stretching towards the back of the neck, top of the shoulder blade. Use your right hand to cradle the head and slowly lift it all the way back up to center and release fingertips back down. Give yourself a few shoulder shrugs and we'll set ourselves up for the other side. So this time left ear drops down towards the left shoulder. Keep your chin slightly lifted. Hold if this is enough. Otherwise, right fingertips reach out to the side 
and the left hand can very lightly traction the ear further away from the shoulder. So it's not a downward pressure, it's really a pulling and a lengthening action. And the neck can be a sensitive and vulnerable area, so we never want to go further than we need to. Notice if you're slouching or rounding through the upper back and chest. And just like we did on the other side, you're going to start to drop the chin down, this time towards the left shoulder and left armpit. And cradling the head with your hand, let's lift our head all the way back up. And you can move your bolster out to the side if that's what you had. So I don't think I've ever taught this next pose in a yin yoga class before. It's a fantastic way to stretch into the hamstrings. You'll want to have probably a block or two close by. So sitting up nice and tall. Bring your legs forward in front of you. And then we're going to bend into our right knee and then cross your right foot over the top of your left thigh. Now you wanna see if you're able to stack your right knee over the top of the left. So this is almost like knee pile pose where both legs are bent, except we're going to keep our left leg nice and straight. The knee might not completely pile up on top of the other one. For you, it might look something like this, which is perfectly fine. You can always use a block to kind of close that gap over time. But if you can stack one over the other, then that's what you're going to want to do. And then from here, we're going to hinge at the waist 
and start to fold down and it really doesn't take uh, much to start to get that really deep stretch into the left leg into the hamstrings and because this is a yin practice let yourself soften and relax and then what I like to do is to just use a block and place it either on the upper leg or the bottom leg we want to relax our arms the neck shoulders just let gravity do the work. Breathing deeply, our last minute in the pose. So waking up the arms a little bit more, start to press the palms into the floor and really slowly lift and make your way back up. Be mindful of your low back and of your legs as you do this. There's really no need to rush the transition out of the pose. 
And once you're up, you can uncross the legs. Before we do the other side, let's bring our feet flat to the ground, hands behind you, and just let your knees drop side to side. It's a really great pose to get into the backs of the legs. It helps to get into the glutes as well if you have sciatica. This time we'll need to bring our right leg forward left knee will bend and you can cross your left ankle over the top of your thigh and see if you're able to stack your left knee over the top of your right so if it doesn't make it all the way there again putting a block in between you can help to close that gap so that you don't need to engage your muscles when you're in this pose we always want to make this as simple easy and passive as we possibly can and easing your way down into a fold on the side. Notice if you need to change or adjust anything. And take the time to get yourself settled. Without tensing up the shoulders.
and engaging the arms. Let's come out of this side. Just like we did before, feet will go flat to the ground. Let the knees drop side to side. So we'll do one more pose that I have never taught before or never taught on YouTube at least. This is called bow tie and it's a really wonderful way to stretch into the shoulders, upper back and a little bit into the neck as well. So you'll want to have one block close by and in order to do this pose, you're laying down on your belly and your forehead is either on a block or down on the floor. You're just going to want to cross one arm over the other. So we'll start by wrapping our right arm on top of the left and then you're just laying straight down. So you're gonna be stretching over into here. And it takes a little bit of adjusting at first. So right arm on top, left arm underneath and cross it as far as you can so the more you cross the deeper the stretch will be and for some of you maybe the forehead will be able to go to the floor for me i like to rest my head or my forehead on a block start to ease your way out of the pose we'll just move over to the other side so second side this time the left arm will be on top of the right 
and you're just crossing them as much as you can and folding down two minutes on this side. Slowly easing out of the side. Let's press and make our way back up. And we'll swing our legs forward. And lower down onto your back. So knees bent, feet flat on the mat. Let's move into our reclined pigeon pose. Crossing the right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Flex the foot and press the knee away from you. And let's use our arms so to start drawing that left thigh in towards the belly.
and releasing the hold of that left thigh. Keep your legs exactly as they are. Just let the left foot come back down to the floor. We're gonna get deep into the IT band from here. So all you need to do, maintain this figure four shape with the legs, but let your left thigh drop to the floor until your right foot can come down to the ground. So for some, if the hips are tight, the right foot might not make it all the way there, in which case you can just put a block underneath that right foot to make it a little bit easier. But if the foot can make it there, you can either reach your right arm out to the side to try to keep your right shoulder pressing on the floor, and you can hold on to your ankle, or you can even press your left hand to the inside of that right thigh to push it further away from you. So we're looking for that nice deep stretch into the IT band, the outer edge of your hip, and maybe a little bit down the outer edge of your right leg too. Releasing this pose, start to uncross the legs and gently lift the knees back up to center. And before we do the other side, it might feel good to just stretch the legs out long, maybe reach the arms up overhead. And then with the feet flat to the mat, let's take our reclined pigeon pose, left ankle 
over the top of your right knee. Flex that foot and reaching with the arms. You're trying to pull your right knee in towards the belly. Release, right foot comes back down to the floor. And we'll take that IT band stretch. So drop your right thigh or the outer edge of your right thigh to the floor until your left foot comes in contact either with the ground or you put a block underneath that foot. Left arm to the side, try to keep that left shoulder grounded. And you can either hold on to your ankle or you can use your right hand to press the knee away.
Lifting the legs back up and then crossing them. Making our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. So Shavasana is where I will leave you. I'm gonna hold it for at least three or four or five minutes. You're welcome to stay in it for much longer if you'd like. When you are ready to get up and get on with your day, please do subscribe to my channel and share the video with anyone who could use a little bit of yin in their lives. In Shavasana, you wanna have the shoulder blades drawing down the back and the palms facing up, taking up some space and really learning to let go and soften.